Hello, my name is Shirley Self, and I'm here to talk astrology. In my continuing discussion of the work of William Butler Yeats, um, Journey of the Soul, I've come to Moon Phase 19. Um, moon Phase 19, and you'll notice the star up there, is one of those mandatory phases because they're exceedingly important that you live uh, in the physical in those phases, that you physically endure those phases. And, um, and notice that Moon Phase 18 also has uh, one of those stars that you physically endure that phase. And um, Moon Phase 18 ha has endured uh, an awful lot. The Moon Phase 18 is still divided in mind. The uh, uh, lunar and the solar minds are antagonistic um, because the lunar mind still is hooked on the ideal of the perfect life or perfect action or perfect me and um, is uh, in, in distress about the fact that that is all lost. It is all lost. While the uh, uh, solar mind goes out into the world and pursues some specialty that is of exceeding interest and he has a great talent at it and so off he goes and dragging the poor moon along with it's a, a very, 18 is a very difficult, difficult moon phase. And often you can't, it takes a few lifetimes to get 18 to do anything at all because it, um, they hate conflict and um, uh, don't want to have to deal. And, and if, if, you, if you're going to accomplish anything in, in the world, especially up here, you're going to deal with conflict. This is a quarter of conflict. Um, so moon phase 19, that's behind him. Yay! And you, moon phase 19's kind of hit the ground running. They're here, um, this rectangle of power, and, uh, and that power is because the lunar mind and the solar mind are both directed out into the world to uh, conquer and uh, uh, administer um, their own specialty. So uh, these three phases up here are a, a triad of where they're building a social identity. Um, they've gone way beyond instinct, and they're not dependent on rewards, so they're very self-motivated. Um, what they want, their goal, is to be honored, to be remembered, to go down in history or myth, preferably myth. Well, that's history, right? Okay, so here we've come to Moon Phase 19. This is the assertive will. This is a lifetime of initiation. Of um, As uh, the Moon slowly abandons those old emotional priorities and uh, uh, will becomes a conduit for a div divine energies, virtually. A conduit for divine energies. Sagittarius, Sagittarius decanate. So... Um, what will has now to guide, uh, what the united mind now is attending to, is uh, conviction. And that comes from the creative genius down here. And that's where Persephone was discovered, if you'll remember. And this is the, uh, brings to uh, 19 an inner validation, a conviction that what they're doing is right, it's worthy. Um, this uh, conviction is their right motivation for action. And as they sacrifice uh, old emotional habits, and uh, by now it's simply habit, and they know it, uh, as, as uh, their personal power grows and their conviction grows stronger. So eventually, um, what will ha uh, happen to them is they will, uh, the daemon will give them a vision. And it'll be a vision of their destiny, of what they can do within the world, within the destiny of man, what they can do. This is a heightened view of reality. And, um, and it's an inspiring one that uh, can carry 19 to the heights. Now, unlike 18, who hated conflict, hated conflict, kept 18 um, at home, uh, hiding out for uh, 18 and 4, the mask of 18. Um, it was uh, facing the world, going out into the world, fighting for what you want, for what you believe in and what you want. It was hard for 18. <laughs> 19 loves it. Now, um, 
there's a, a concept that Yeats talked about of uh, group mind. Um, anytime, uh, you know, out, out in society, in the culture, at any time there are ideas that are making an impact, new ideas that are making an impact on people. And that's where these people shine. They, uh, they want to be on the leading edge of change. And so they will be um, involved in uh, developing these ideas. And that's called group mind. Now these ideas tend to, they tend, they do come in, uh, in opposites. Uh, uh, they come in pairs. And uh, what is supposed to happen is eventually those pairs come into a new, uh, uh, a new way of doing or being or thinking or whatever. And, uh, and, and then the world gets primed for old new ideas to come in and um, keep us moving forward. So um, what M Moon Phase 19 is, is doing here is he's riding the changing mind of the times and helping direct that changing mind. Um, his, he's got a mask here, and that is, uh, you know, that's his mode of um, effective action. It gives him a spontaneous drama that conceals his real motivation. And his real motivation is revolution. Um, uh, the mask brings him a lot of energy and, and makes him, uh, oh, yes, but also makes him willful, disruptive, and contrary, which is uh, important for a revolutionary to... Um, to be free of what other people think of you. To a certain extent, you've got to have your own morality. And morality is important for these people up here. Morality is very important. That's their, ma their mask. Um, that's what they need to own in order to be effective in their action. So uh, these people up here are, uh, are noted for their rhetoric. They're, they have the power of persuasion. Now, this has been a goal. To, because that's truly the power, human power is the power of the mind. And that, uh, the goal of uh, that power, to attain that power, has been um, with these people since 16 realized the power of ideas in the world. So fortunately, uh, 19 no longer needs the agreement of people. Uh, and, um, and it's a good thing because he can't really depend on other people to support him. He's so way out front about things. Um, he and is um, um, he kind of has to go it alone. I mean, he's got the group, um, and, but the group is a, a, a sort of a competition for him. He's got a mate, but that mate is uh, mostly inspiration for him. It's his muse. Um, so in, his independence is really important. Notice over here we've got uh, the body of fate is um, uh, th thinking independently over there in Aquarius, uh, the Gemini decanet. So, um, so what he needs is uh, relationships. Those close relationships should be just simply, they should be uh, egalitarian. Um, he, and he need, because he needs the mental uh, stimulation for, for, uh, from uh, a re re closer relationships. He needs a muse. Um, what he's what he's done, as as he um, as nineteen slowly loses those emotional habits that uh, tell him what is right action, and follow his conviction, and as he develops that um, that power, he develops his ability to see others. And to see the world as it is. And he, he can see others, he can perceive their mo mo motivation. And so he has developing an ability to see others for who they are. And appreciate them for who they are. Um, so uh, we've got an um, a intellect up here that is a specialty, uh, specializes. Um, and that, Yeats said, it, that broke the unity of the being. I mean, when you've got... You've got um, um, you're focusing now on, on uh, a narrow grouping of powers or a narrow way of using your powers, and um, you're becoming um, a specialist, a scientist. Um, 
So the power of the being now is focused through a fragment of the, of the being. And so that focus is like a laser. Um, his clarity that he gets over here, he's, and he's got a, a double whammy of clarity. He's got the mask in Gemini, Gemini. He's got uh, the body of fate in Gemini. His clarity is tremendous. His um, ability to sense the world, to sense what's going on, that he gets from uh, his mask over there, is, is uh, very, very effective. Very, very true for him. Um, so that clarity is essential because he's, um, he's busy analyzing, he's busy reasoning, reasoning, he's busy theorizing. Um, all that is dependent on his uh, sacrifice of those habits. Um, as he breaks free of those habits, he wants to break free from those habits. And as he breaks them one by one, you know, as he breaks through them, his power increases. And sometimes the, the, um, the freedom, the liberation that comes with uh, realizing that that's not important to you is, uh, well, as Yates said, will throw them out of phase. And these are very domineering, dominating people. In their enthusiasm, they can be overwhelming. So and their their potential uh, for these people is huge for good or for evil. Um, so the creative genius down here, our Persephone, is uh, the source of their conviction. And if they pay attention to their convictions, their timing will be excellent, and they will be lucky. Um, now understand that the consort of uh, Persephone down here is Pluto the destroyer and the rebuilder. And so um, what uh, 19 can get from his creative genius is uh, a, an understanding, a clarity about what needs changed and an ability to come up with new solutions. Uh, so um, he, he has to be busy. His mask is uh, physical activity. He... Um, He's uh, kind of phys physically sluggish, and his mind uses an awful lot of energy. So um, it's hard to keep them moving, but they need to stay busy because otherwise they do nothing. They produce nothing. They are, um, um, these people are specialties, specialized in their intellect. They're... Um, they're um, their conviction is all that can bring them passion to act in the world. Um, and what they will do is, is uh, because this creative genius, the creative genius is very important to people up here. This creative genius is, is about discovering natural law. What is uh, vir virtually Venus. What these people have done down here is, is discovered their own personal natural law, but they, it's also an understanding of natural law uh, pretty much across the board. It makes these people down here um, um, very attuned to nature and they're, uh, they're, uh, um, they're relieved and loved and, and um, um, succored by nature. I know I was. I'm a 14. So anyway, um, uh, these people are powerful. The minds have come together. Now what happens is the power comes first. But the control of that power is uh, the result of them using it. So power com comes first, control comes later. Um, and um, so they have to have a certain amount of care here. They've got to use that, uh, the tremendous enthusiasm that comes to them um, is uh, can just run them over other people. They have to use the care of that uh, cancer decanent of, of Scorpio. They have to care about other people. Um, out of phase, um, they're, uh, they'll still be hooked on their ideal life and they will want. They'll have habits of, of wanting, of habits of gratification. That'll leave them insecure and they'll be untrustworthy people. In or out of phase, they have a desire to win. They have a need to win. And, um, and when they're out of phase, they'll do anything to win. 
they'll take any stance. They'll be, they'll uh, do uh, in right now what they denied uh, two minutes ago. They're uh, they're dramatic, domineering, overwhelming people. They um, out of phase. They'll believe that the end justifies the means. Well, they can't depend on any other anybody else to help them do anything. So you know, the end justifies the means. What do pe other people deserve? Uh, they'll be opinionated instead of knowing. They'll have no con co no convictions. They will be uh, totally unfaithful to themselves. They'll have no self control, but they will try to control others. They're uh, capricious, arbitrary people. They're tyrannical and insolent. These are uh, dangerous people. They have a great potential for violence, for evil. And they have to stay in tune with that loving nature, which is very much uh, from, from, the, uh, from their creative genius, which is so important to them. Um, they have to avoid being intimidating and, and dominating. And one-to-one, -one, they are very... Uh, you notice them. They're dominating people. One-to-one, uh, -one, they, they can overwhelm you. Um, if if you're, you're timid, it's hard to stand up to them. Uh, they need to learn to get their uh, satisfaction from action out in the world and not um, in um, telling uh, other people, uh, guiding other people. Um, when they tell people that what, what to do, other people feel um, uh, obliged to do it. I mean, these are powerful people. The tremendous amount of conviction goes with them. And they're charismatic they're um, they're politicians. They're, they're virtually what they they need to be uh, out into the world um, and um, uh, focused on uh, the larger picture, the bigger picture, the smaller picture. They overwhelm. They're um, they're into the practical application of theoretical knowledge. They're experimenters. They're politicians. They're scientists. Um, so, uh, because they're physically sl sluggish and, and their mind uses a tremendous amount of their energy, um, they can become inert. And that'll separate the mind from, uh, from their senses. They'll become separate, separate from their uh, mask. And this is the physical senses that they need to attend to because they need to stay grounded in reality. In, or not, they tend to float off in their minds. Um, so they need, um, they need good sex. Uh, as Yates said, sex will ground them in the five that make the muses sing. The five is the senses, and the muses, are, what he's saying is that a good sex is inspiring. It's inspiring. These people need, um, need good sex. They need sex in order to bring them, um, to make them sensitive, to bring them back to their senses, because they can get lost. Um, now, what they're busy doing out there, supposed to, supposedly, is um, changing minds, illuminating social problems. These people are teachers. Um, uh, they need to world, move the world towards some visionary goal that they have. And in order to do that, they will uh, endure persecution, and they will face, uh, with equanimity, a failure. The body of fate, their body of fate over there, ensures that they're going to go to war alone, that they're going to be so far ahead of the curve that, uh, that they're going to be in the front of everybody. And, by, and often that they'll, they will fight the fight uh, that they do not see the end of the war. They do not see the victory. They, uh, they will start the fight like Martin Luther King did down here. He's the mask of 19. Um, Martin Luther King started a fight he did not see the end of. Well, we haven't any of us seen the end of that one, but we're still fighting it. And uh, he, he gave it a good kick in the butt, get it going. So, um, um, so phase 18 was wistful at the cost to do this wonderful thing, to do proceed in this great adventure out into the world, but um, energized by the prospect and energy, what energy they were able to pour into it. 
Um, but 19 says, hang the cost. Get on with it. I think some of the aggression that they they uh, show you is uh, just so they can push through that sentiment for for what was uh, important in the past. So Moonface 19s are amazing people. Um, uh, here's here's their card. Now, this is the devil, and what it means. It, this is the mystery that you penetrate. Before, uh, before you can know the higher principle of the self. This is the transition between your normal waking conscious and consciousness and uh, true spiritual consciousness. This is raw power. Capricorn here, it's uh, Capricorn rules this card, is a sign of initiation into power and control of power. Now, what the devil represents, notice that he's got a little pentagram up there on his head. It represents the... Um, uh, average person's understanding of reality. So, uh, trapped in the, these people here are trapped in the limited understanding of the times. And what phase 19 does is breaks through that limitation. They are actually leading, uh, leading the uh, uh, wave that breaks through that limitation of the times. They're, try they're turning that star right side up which is the release from the limitations of the times. So um, they're, um, this is their a creative genius. Uh, let me take down this guy so we can see a little more what we're, what, what we're doing. Um, so the devil, 5 and 19, right here, and it, it, Mercury. And uh, the sun, and I think that's kind of interesting. That connects Mercury and the sun because it's been noted that Mercury itself has no conscience. It'll work for whatever, you know. Daedalus built the Daedalus, the the Mercury uh, uh, Minos built the um, the contraption for the queen that allowed her to mate with the bull, and then for the king, he built the uh, um, minute. The, the maze that uh, confined the Minotaur. So, I mean, he was willing to work for anybody, and that's Mercury, and that's the devil. And saying that the only guidance here for this Mercury is to see through the limitations of the times. So, um, this is the uh, creative genius and the body of faith, the, the lovers, and it connects uh, the sun with Saturn. And it is uh, the sword and armor. It's the uniting the the, uh, the dual mind. It's the death of the past. It's the sword of perception cutting through to the core of things. And I think that's what it's important uh, to Moon Phase 19. It's a spiritual test of spiritual strength. A return to innocence. It's a war against limitation. And it's the active use of power. The active use of power. So, um, it's got some really cool, oh my God, some really cool Moon Phase 19s. Daniel Rat, Ratcliffe, our, our uh, Harry Potter, Don, uh, John DeLorean, uh, our Buckminster Fuller, Joseph Stalin. Now, I've also seen, uh, ru heard rumors that Joseph Stalin was a five. I don't. I don't think so. He he was too busy. Um, he didn't start at home. What a good, which is what a good five, five does. Starts at home. That's what Martin Luther King did. He started at home. So, um, who else we got? Andy Warhol. Um, Vladimir Putin. It's interesting that Vladimir and his namesake um, Vlad the Impaler of this um, a rectangle of power. Um, David Berkowitz, son of Sam. Prince Harry is a, 50, is a 19. Condoleezza Rice. Betty Davis. Alfred Kinsey. And William Butler Yeats. Okay, can you see that? His information is uh, 13 June... 1865 at 10:40 p.m. 
in Dublin, Ireland. This is W.B. Yeats. He's, I, I did a list of all his uh, quintiles, and he's got a bunch of them. Um, his, uh, this started at the beginning, the ascendants ruled by that exalted Saturn in the 8th house, um, which is conjunct the North Node. And it's also conjunct the creative genius. The creative genius is, um, for moon phase 19, is the ascendant minus 103 degrees. The ascendant minus 103 degrees. So, um, that ascendant uh, is uh, also ruled by the uh, Uranus uh, conjunct the sun in um, Gemini. Um, is midheaven ruled by uh, Jupiter in Sag in the 11th of groups and associations. And he was a uh, mover and shaker in the Golden Dawn in his later years. Uh, but he also started throughout his youth and throughout his life. He started groups to uh, study anything. He started uh, theater groups. He was a playwright. Um, his body of fate uh, brought to him, his body of fate's down there in the uh, uh, third house. It's 17 Aries, 55, the 18th degree of Aries. And uh, that body of fate brought him his first muse, Maud Gone. Um, and notice it's in the third house. And what he did was he saw her, uh, and she was uh, dressed up. It was spring. She was standing in front of a uh, tree uh, covered with flowers. And he he was smitten. Um, and I don't know if he ever got over it. Um, by the time he was uh, 52 he knew he needed a new muse. That one was worn out. But anyway, notice that obsessive uh, Venus-Pluto conjunction in the third house. And um, that, uh, uh, the Neptune, the Neptune in, uh, where is that Neptune? It's in the third house. It's ruled by the Mars. It's ruled by the Sun, which is ruled by the Mercury in the third house. Um, that Mars is squared to the Venus. Now, this is a tremendous amount of tension and frustration. And that was a, a very, very creative uh, tension for William Butler Yeats, that obsession he had with Maud Gone. Um, his uh, uh, parental line was ruled is ruled, was ruled, by Jupiter and uh, Mercury. And they're both in their rulerships. And uh, and his mother uh, at the at the midheaven was Fay, <laughs> And I mean, uh, she was, a, um, she was psychic. And his father was an artist and a moon phase too. I never found out what his mother, his, what moon phase his mother was. Um, so his his muse, Maud Gone, eluded him. That's at uh, Mars square Venus. So at age 52, uh, when um, he, uh, his, um, so much of his stuff had progressed to the, uh, his, had a busy, busy progression on his descendant. Saturn, Sun, Mars. And he realized it was time that if he just acted right, he could, um, he could, uh, find him a new muse. He could marry him a new muse, and it would be a, a, a Saturn muse, a permanent muse, a muse that would rest, last him the rest of his life and not run a Peter out in a few years, which they had been doing, I guess, for him. So what, at age, age 52, uh, he married Georgie Hyde Lees, who was uh, a cohort of his in the Golden Dawn and a good friend and 25 years younger, and um, the story is exceedingly interesting, and it's in my book, if you should want to buy it. Uh, the book is fairly cheap. Um, this, uh, this muse lasted him the rest of his, his life and provided him with the information that uh, uh, he turned into a vision. Uh, and the reason it, he did not uh, do well uh, with the vision was because he was trying to hide the fact that... Um, 
he and his wife were magicians who indulged in sacred sex and that he believed that sex was holy and that he believed that women were his equal. And so, of course, because he was he was a politician and fighting again in the Irish uh, Senate for to for uh, separation of church and state, and he failed. As uh, but he was at the forefront of that fight, and that fight is still kind of going on. Although I think the church is is definitely realized it's on the it's on the losing end here. Um, so uh, anyway, that Saturn that is his exalted Saturn in the 8th house, conjunct the North Node, is uh, conjunct Georgie Hydley's Yeats' son. The, um, the descendant is uh, ruled by that changeable um, Sun-Uranus uh, conjunction in the 5th house of lovers, and uh, he took lovers all his life, um, and his wife Georgie was a moon phase 26, the hunchback whose clarity of vision allows them to be incredibly forgiving, incredibly forgiving. And so she was. And she took care of him um, and his works the rest of her life. Um, and so that's um, Moon Phase 19. It's uh, to find it on your horoscope. It's 51 degrees, 26 minutes after the full moon. And that, uh, and it uh, encompasses that uh, 12, um, almost 13 degrees after 51, 26. So it's to 20, or it's to 64 degrees. So that's how you find uh, that um, moon phase on your relationship of your sun and your moon on your chart. So that was moon phase 19. They're powerful people. They're powerful people and um, need to be focused out into the world where they can make great effect, uh, hopefully for the better. And many blessings flow your way, I pray. See you soon. Bye-bye.